Hi. Um. I uh, decided when I first started my uh, my uh, YouTube channel that it was going to be about my travels and about living life as a nomad and that I was going to keep it on that topic. Um, people that follow me talk about how real I am and how they like me because I'm uh, real. But this isn't all of me. Nomad life is not uh, all of the real me. And uh, I just feel like I need to talk about this topic of what's going on in America right now because it's part of my life and it's part of your life too whether you want it to be or not. I'm very upset. I'm very confused. Um, start when I was a kid. I lived in uh, what used to be called a sundowner town. That's what my little hometown is. That's my history. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a town that does not allow black people to stay after dark to be there. They can drive through, but they're not staying overnight. I found that out when I was very young because uh, we were one house over from what back then was called a highway <laughs> that went through town. And uh, I was maybe seven or eight, and we were playing in our front yard, and uh, a truck went by with an open flatbed, you know, kind of, and there were black people on the back of it. And uh, we watched it go by, and in my young mind, I noticed they were different, but I didn't feel any way about it, you know. And a friend of ours, who was in our little group, said, don't worry, they're not allowed to stay overnight, they're just going through. And at the time, I thought, I wasn't worried. Wonder why they're not allowed to stay overnight, you know? And uh, that's the only event when I was a kid. Uh, when we were kids, the adults didn't talk around us. So I didn't know if what views my parents had or my grandparents at that time. Because when they had company and they had their serious talks, we left the room. And uh, it's not like it is today where they're climbing all over you still and you got kids on your laps and you're talking about stuff. <coughs> Back then, they had company. We left. <clears throat> and uh, when uh, my, my, mom and my, my mom and my dad got divorced before I started grade school, so I was like, I guess I was four when she left. And uh, every once in a while they'd stick us on the bus on the Greyhound to go into St. Louis and she'd pick us up in St. Louis uh, for a weekend visit or whatever. And uh, every time we'd take the bus, it was just me and my sister and my brother who was five years older. So say I was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He was 12, so I guess they figured he could kind of keep an eye on us, but they always had us sit right behind the bus driver or right up front so the bus driver, you know, could see us also. And uh, we usually, the only thing I remember about those trips was uh, the black people on the bus. Uh, there was usually always a, a sweet black older lady that would talk to us and, and be nice to us and... And I never had negative feelings about anything. 
I never had a reason to. Because as much as I loved my dad, and I wanted to be just like him, I didn't know what he was like as far as that particular topic went. Because they didn't talk about it in front of us. They do nowadays, like I said. But, okay, so when we'd visit my mom, I saw black people. Um, I just never put the two together until I got a little bit older. And I guess the... When I really realized there was a difference was uh, when uh, Martin Luther King started showing up on the TV. And uh, I'd hear things about them being, you know, attacked or whatever. And, and I, back then, it was like, wow, this guy's a preacher. Why are they so mad at him? You know, the few things they did show him talking about seemed pretty decent, you know. And I thought, why is, why is everybody, <laughs> he's a preacher. What are they doing to this poor preacher? You know, I used to go to Lutheran school when I was a kid. And uh, we always went to Sunday school and, you know, my family was real religious, you know. And I thought, well, that's weird, you know. And uh, even in high school, I used to practice the invisibility in school because I was very shy, but the one time I spoke up, I remember, was when I was a senior. By then, of course, I knew, you know, how people felt about different things, and uh, because of my past experiences, I just couldn't understand it. It made no sense to me, and so... Somehow they were they got on a topic in English about uh, black people and white people mixing together, you know. And I actually said something, and somebody else, some guy, I remember, he said, "Yeah, well, do you want your sister to marry one?" And you know, innocent dumb me, I said, "Well." If she loved him, yeah. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah, if they love each other, why not, you know? To me, I always just saw other human beings with darker skin. And so I saw the color. I, You know, it wasn't I... Anyway, you know what I mean. I just didn't understand why people got so hepped up. You know, the few black people that I had met to, up to that point were really nice. Why are they trying to make them sound like they're something terrible, you know? So, uh, when I was younger, you know, when I graduated, it was 1970, so... Hippies, flower children, and I thought, well, this is the generation that they're going to change everything. Because I saw hippies, black and white, hanging out together, getting high together. Jimi Hendrix, you know, was a great musician. There were black and white artists, singers and stuff. So my life, you know, I always connected it to movies and, and songs. I've always done that. And I thought, well, you know... It's getting better. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I'm getting. Well, you know what I'm getting at. Basically, I thought this is the generation that's going to get better now. And, of course, it didn't. It got worse. And worse. And worse and worse until now we're at, I'm 67. And it's worse than it was. And I don't understand that. I don't understand how there can still be people around who see something other than another human being. It makes no sense to me. They see, I, I don't even know what they see. They see bad people. Some of them don't even see people. I see uh, 
I don't know. It just bugs me. So someone said, you know, how come, why don't you post something positive? All your stuff is negative on Facebook. And I thought, well, what, what positive is going on right now? You know, I'm posting positive stuff. This person just isn't noticing those, I guess. But uh, everything I'm posting lately is about the stuff going on. And I want to go to a march, and I can't walk. So I can't really do anything. But not talking about it seems... Seems like uh, the wrong thing to do right now. I think everybody should be having a conversation about this. If you have concerns, you should talk about it. If you have black friends, I have black friends, you know. If you do, talk to them. Don't talk to me, talk to them. See what you can do. I did find one place that's going to do a, 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 a protest or, you know, uh, a march, or not a march, but uh, I think it's going to be at the courthouse in a town near where I am. And they didn't say anything about marching. Um, another town said, we're going to meet at the corner of this and this and we're going to go walk, you know, and I knew I couldn't do that. I can't walk. I mean, I can walk, but I can't do that. So, this place is going to meet at the courthouse, and I thought, well, I can go to the courthouse grounds and sit and hold a sign, you know? <laughs> so, I may try to go to that one, because I feel like I should be doing something. And... Uh, Obviously, I can't donate money to the cause because I got none. But I'm, I am going to talk about it as much as I can because it makes no sense to me. These are human beings. And I've always said one race, the human race. The human race. And we're all a part of this. Maybe it's my Jewish background that makes me feel this way because I remember I think I even said it once when I was 13 I read the rise and fall of the third Reich because I wanted to understand why they treated Jews differently I still don't really understand either that either but as much as I thought that was wrong I think this is wrong too so anyway um, I just encourage you all not to stick your head in the sand. When I was younger, I should have done more, but, uh, I was so wrapped up in my life and what was going on. I cared, I just wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't realize nearly as much as I realize now, but I have no excuses now. And to not say anything about it and pretend it's just, you know, not going on is, is not part of who I am. So, I don't know what I'm trying to get at, except that y'all need to know who I am. And this is a big part of who I am. Um, the looting and stuff, I don't even want to hear about that. Please don't even say, it's too bad he died, but they're, you know, destroying buildings and all this stuff. Because that's just not even, not even important as far as I'm concerned. What's important is all the people that are dying. That's important. You can rebuild a house. You can't bring someone back to life. You can rebuild a business. You can't bring somebody back to life. So, please, don't use that excuse. It's not a good one. Um, I guess that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I was upset this morning. That was my tearful morning. Uh, I've been uh, pretty upset about all this. 
and trying to keep it out of my videos has been difficult. So I figured I'd just might as well show you another side of me. Um, things just have to change. I'm just so tired of this. And it hasn't even affected my life one iota. And I'm upset about it anyway because it's killing a lot of people for no reason. For no reason. And uh, people are saying, well, uh, George Floyd wasn't a good guy and he had a criminal record. That's fine. Did you ever have a relative that was an alcoholic or addicted to drugs? That did some things you didn't like? Did he deserve to get killed for it? Nobody has the right to do that to another human being. That he was breaking the law, take him in, put him through the put him through the judicial system or whatever, but you do not have the right to kill him. A policeman does not have the right to kill anybody. Unless, of course, they're aiming a gun at them, maybe, you know. But uh, police need to be educated better. I mean, one of the ones that really hit me the hardest was Tamir Rice. That was the kid, the child, who was at a park playing with a toy gun. It was a squirt gun. And I think he was 13 or 14. And uh, a lady called, and I heard the 911 call. She said she thinks it's a toy gun, but he needs to, someone needs to talk to him or something like that. And I saw the video where the cop pulled up within seconds, and I mean seconds after he pulled up, Tamir Rice was dead. No. No, that's not right. Ah, okay. So everybody have a nice day. <laughs> and I will talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can go to that one uh, protest tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. But if nothing else, I'll make a sign and give it to somebody that's going. Love y'all. Love you, Patty. Bye.